Hello and welcome to our third webinar in the Sea Extreme webinar series. I'm Beth McGee and today we'll be discussing ways to enhance your customer's experience on your mobile banking app. Before I introduce our speakers, I want to remind you that we'll be recording today's session and I'll be sending the recording and slides soon after the webinar. Please use the hashtag CXStream to follow the conversation on Twitter. That's C-X-T-R-E-M-E, -E, as you can see on the screen. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat window on the left. Uh, so to get started, as many of you know, Confirmit enables organizations to develop, implement, and maintain Voice of the Customer employee engagement and market research programs. Speaking on today's webinar, we have Miguel Ramos, the Mobile Practice Lead for Confirmit, and Lisa Garthside, Director of Customer Experience Management at Confirmit. Miguel has over 15 years of experience developing mobile solutions for both Voice of the Customer and market research programs. Lisa has over 20 years of experience in market research, with the last five focusing on customer experience across a variety of verticals, as well as with the B2B and B2C organizations. And with that, I'll turn it over to Miguel and Lisa. Miguel? Thank you, Beth. Hi, everyone. My name is Miguel Ramos, and uh, I'm the subject matter expert for mobile solutions at Confirmit. Today, I'm here with Lisa um, Garthside, the Director of Customer Experience. And we're going to talk about the value of leveraging mobile to gather in the moment feedback for your financial and banking apps. Over the next 50 minutes, we will share what we have learned from our experiences. And here on the screen, you've got the summary of the webinar. We, I will start with the emergence of the connected customer. And the idea is to take you through the importance of that mobile has in our world and how all uh, your banking customers, they're more and more connected through to your system through the, their mobile apps. Then Lisa will take you through the, how the VOC program, how to define and design your VOC program for mobile. And then I will talk about how to listen and to collect feedback using mobile devices. We will finish with uh, closing the loop, the analysis and taking actions of, of uh, all the mobile insights. And the last part will be uh, the emerging mobile, mobile techniques that we have. We are actually seeing that our customers are using more and more. So let's start. The emergence of the connected customer. I wanted to um, just show you just a few sets of statistics. The, um, as, as, as you all know, the, the world population has exceeded 7 billion on March uh, 2012. And for some of the developing countries and the developed countries, for the developed countries, there are more than, more than 110 mobile subscriptions per 100 inhabitants. So that means that the adoption of mobile connections is really proceeding at a faster rate than their previous technologies. As a, just another set of statistics, the sales of the smartphones has grown from 21 in 2011 to 30% in 2014. But my interesting um, statistics that I found from the GSMA intelligence group is the fact that they predict that more than four out of five people worldwide they will have access to, to 3G networks by 2020. That's up from 70% today. While 4G networks will cover over 60% of the global population by, by this point, which is up from 25% today. For me, the interesting, this graph is very interesting because it's, it's really showing how 4G is accelerating the high-speed penetration of mobile networks. And certainly in developing countries like in Asia and South America, they're going to benefit directly from this high-speed internet um, since, simply because they're going to skip the need to have a landline or broadband. So if we take it back to mobile banking or internet banking, your customers in developing countries, they are going to connect to their banks using their mobile devices. 
And this is not all about uh, just mobile, mobile, uh, mobile devices. The growth of mobile apps, and this is what you can see on the screen, is, is incredible. The, the top figure is the number of mobile apps in the Apple Store, which is uh, 1.4 million, and 1.5 million in Google Play Stores. And the, and the other two figures show the number of downloads for both stores. So what I have done is selected just the, the graph for, um, for the Apple Store downloads. And as you can see, in 2008, there were zero apps and zero downloads. And the, uh, the growth of the downloads is really taking an and, uh, exponential growth. So if, you, if, we, if I take it back to mobile banking, you can see that mobile banking will really displace online banking for everyday tasks. The simplicity, immediacy, and context of mobile banking through apps means that it is slowly by, by steadily displacing online banking for routine banking tasks like checking account balances, viewing transaction histories, making transfers, and paying bills. And um, some leading banks are already seeing the number of mobile interactions that overtaking the uh, number, overtaking the number of app interactions overtaking the online interactions. But let me move into the next uh, slide. What's the mobile landscape in the U.S.? Well, the U.S. digital media, media time spent has jumped. 20% in, in the past year, dri driven by a surge in mobile app usage, which increased by 52%. And in the graph, you can see the 60% of the digital media time spent in the U.S. is on mobile devices. And the digital media time spent on desktop is actually reducing and reducing. So this is actually a channel to consider. What's the mobile landscape in the, in the UK? Well, the UK, for the UK, mobile has also sh uh, now become more engaging than desktop, and it's accounting for 56% of all time spent on the internet. But the introduction of mobile devices has really completely changed the digital landscape, and, and there, is more po there are more population currently using multi-platforms, which is desktop and mobile. But for me, the 72 is very, very important. We've got a, a digital, digital population of 47 million in the UK. But for me, the interesting figure is this 5%. 5% of your customers, your banking customers, are only connecting to the, connecting to the internet using their mobile devices and you should take them into consideration because they're going to be growing and growing. You need to start thinking about capturing the feedback about those uh, customers that will only use mobile devices to connect to the internet. So let's move into um, a voice of the program and uh, what we're going to do today with the help of Lisa, is to take you through the whole process of a VLC program for mobile. So, back to you, Lisa. Thank you, Miguel. As Miguel said, I'm now going to take a step back into the world of the Voice of the Customer program and look about how we go about integrating this connected customer. So, how do we start to understand this new this group? As you've seen, our connected customer has an increasingly complex pattern of usage. They want or need to operate across channels, and particularly on mobile, and expect to be engaged with in the same way as they are online. And then there are your internal business customers. They're also connected. They're also on mobile, and they want to keep in touch with updates in mobile reporting. So at Confirmate, our first step in setting up the program is what we call divine and design. 
And the first thing to discover at this stage is an understanding of the business priorities and how they relate to the program priorities. On the screen, you can see typical business priorities. These are groups around revenue, cost, and culture, specifically culture change. These are the same today as they've always been, and the same whether the customer is connecting with us through mobile or via some other means. Typically within these projects, we see the desire to grow revenue through new customers, keeping customers, and through selling more to customers. And specifically around cost, your program can help to improve processes and, importantly in banking, help to ensure consistency and compliance. Finally, the culture change piece, all around becoming increasingly customer focused, not just with the customer facing functions, but across the business. So our whole approach is illustrated in a diagram we call the I. These five themes are points of discussion today. First, we have to define our program, then we design it. We then listen to customers across a range of channels, and Miguel is going to talk to us about the mobile option. But, but what's important is that we make it easy and intuitive for them. And then finally, we have a duty to analyze, understand, and use. We need to act on the data. So to start with design and design. So for mobile, our design will first look at the specific business objective. What do we want to know from these people? Then, where does mobile fit in? We may want to understand what the impact mobile is on the business, but we may not actually want to complete the survey using only a mobile device. We are talking about the connected customer, so they are using multiple channels to communicate with us. What's important is that we understand the options that they want us to use. Part of this design phase will be thinking about the type of surveys we need to conduct. And here we're increasingly seeing a mixture of very short transactional surveys. Maybe you go into the branch and you get a short transactional survey. Or you make a mobile payment, and again, a short transactional survey pops up. But this doesn't necessarily get us to the real relationship with the bank. What do they actually think about the bank as an organization? And that's where our relationship comes in. We thought the picture of the bride and groom could illustrate this quite nicely. What we need to do is understand our customers. We need to understand how they interact with us as part of the bigger picture because their banking relationship is a small part of their day, even if it's a big focus for the people in the bank. This is where the relationship survey comes into play. It's an infrequent deep dive into how your customers really feel about you across all channels and across all services. But the trick, of course, is not to overwhelm them with questions. Then we have the touch point surveys, the much shorter but very real interactions that they have on a day-to-day -day, um, basis. So a touch point survey is designed to get feedback on this interaction in a quick, in the moment, unobtrusive way. And this is where mobile really comes into its own because we've got it on us all the time. But how do we make sense of all these touch point surveys and our relationship surveys? It can get over, a bit overwhelming and we're in danger of drowning in lots of different data. It doesn't quite fit together. So it's all about asking the right questions. And a good approach is a modular one. We find that most customer journeys fit into three main categories. This is process, people, and product, as well as support, depending on the touch point. We then include the standard questions that you might expect, the opening questions around maybe net promoter, maybe, we, uh, maybe an effort question, depending on the, on the contact. And we can also, of course, include ad hoc questions. This fits both for our slightly more in-depth, detailed relationship survey and for our very short transactional ones. So the relationship survey is likely to cover all the stages shown on the screen. But it's also important to realize that not all surveys include all modules. The point is to understand where they appear in common and then build on this. You can now see some of the possible touch points, mobile banking, online banking, maybe a course to contact center. These can pull across the same modules and the structure allows us to link them together in reporting. However, before we can report on the data, 
we need to collect it. We need to listen to our customers. So back to Miguel to talk about listening and collecting feedback using mobile. Thank you, Lisa. So to listen to your customers, to your banking customers, there are four channels that can be, can be considered, that can be used, uh, used in the mobile devices. There are email, SMS, push messaging, and embedding a web survey within your existing mobile banking app. The first two, email and SMS, um, are j just invitation channels, and uh, they can be used with uh, any touch points, and um, they involve uh, make you they involve you to uh, to make use of mobile web surveys, and if you have a mobile app then you can actually consider the push messaging or the embedding a survey within an app. So what I'm going to do now is to take you through the four uh, ways of collecting mobile feedback. So the first one is an email. If you're currently running feedback, uh, your customers are probably answering, uh, receiving your emails through their mobile devices. But uh, one, um, recommendation that uh, I, I like to make for, um, for all the, mo the mobile channels, for, for VOT programs that I really want to target the mobile channels, as well as the uh, desktop, is to include um, the, the first MPS question on the email. Why? Um, simply because your customers will, um, will respond uh, to the, um, th they can click on the MPS score just uh, through the email, and by clicking on the response, this can take, the, it will take them to the survey, but you already have question one answered. Um, even if they don't reply any, any more of your uh, questions on the survey, you've got their score. Um, so if you use an MPS or customer satisfaction in your, in your survey, you can consider including uh, this type of approach. For SMS, uh, I'm seeing a growth um, on the SMS channel, especially for customers uh, where you don't have a, an email address or customers where, for example, you, uh, you want to capture that in the moment transactions. Maybe the customers that have just left the branch and you want to target them as they've just left uh, the branch. Um, you know they're using their mobile device because you have their mobile phone so you could consider this type, this type of, of approach where you send in them an invitation. The use of SMS has grown steadily over the last 10 years, and one of the core arguments for SMS is that it reaches 99% of all the handsets globally. So it reaches, it, goes, it really goes beyond smartphone or, or web-enabled mobile phone owners. So, if you want to get feedback, if you're looking to capture feedback from all your customers, uh, you could consider the SMS survey with a link like on, you're seeing on the screen or with just by asking a simple two or three questions like maybe an MPS and an open question. But let me take you to the two um, approaches that, that are really can only be used with your mobile banking app. If you have a mobile banking app, you can make use of push messaging, which is um, it's a channel that is developed by the individual smartphone operating systems, iOS and Android, and it has different, different flavors. It's an IP-based mobile messaging. It's very similar to um, SMS. But the difference is that it doesn't have any cost. It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have any cost from 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 your point of view, and it doesn't have any cost from the respondent's point of view. So, with the growth and uh, in the adoption of advanced uh, phones, uh, smartphones, and their corresponding data corresponding data plans, this is a channel that uh, I am actually seeing that is being used by the mobile. Um, mobile banking uh, customers. It's an ideal channel to collect feedback from your mobile banking customers because they have to have your mobile banking app. So why not send them an invitation through your push messaging channel? It's 
very simple and easy to integrate. And the fourth and final approach, it's, um, it's the approach where you actually embed a survey within an existing mobile app. Mobile survey, mobile web surveys can be embedded within an app. And basically, the reason why this is an approach that can be used uh, by uh, all your mobile apps is simply because your mobile apps need connectivity. They, your mobile banking customers, when they're using your app, they're connected to your IT system. So that means that you don't really need to have an, a mobile survey that uh, has an offline capability. So your, your bank, mobile banking customer will, will be connected, will be using the 3G or Wi-Fi connection, and it's very simple to integrate a web survey within an existing mobile app. How do you do that? You can uh, basically have a, a, a URL, which is the same as a web survey, but the, the trick here is to make the survey, uh, the look and feel of the survey, to mimic the mobile app. So that means that your customer feels that they are in the same mobile app, but in reality they're actually using, in the case of Confirm It, the Confirm It survey with all your branding. It's very va valuable to your business simply because it's not anonymous. You can pass through some parameters, and this could be the customer ID. You can, cust you can encrypt the parameters, and um, the survey is active. in reality is not anonymous. And simply because you're opening the survey within a mobile app, you can benefit from all the contextual information that mobile web surveys can provide you with, which is you can collect the GPS information and you can uh, include image questions uh, that uh, your users can use to provide you with feedback. I normally get asked, why would I include an image question? Well, how about including a feedback button on your app and allowing your customers to provide you with feedback uh, about your mobile banking app. Maybe they're looking for a, a new service uh, that, is, um, that is not part of the app, or something is not working. They can take a screenshot, and that's what can be uploaded as part of one of the answers that, that uh, can be sent directly to your internal team. But we are seeing a growth in tablet banking. This approach of embedding a web server within a mobile app banking app can also be used within your tablet banking app. The look and feel of both apps are different, but by using a mobile web survey, you can mimic the two different look and feels, and you can ta target and collect feedback, specialized feedback from your mobile tablet Backing customers. The, as I just mentioned, the simplest way is to include a self-complete feedback, uh, and this makes it very easy for the customer to press on the, on the feedback and provide you with, with feedback about their views of using the, the mobile tablet app. So mobile banking is growing. Mobile tablet apps are growing strongly in the US and the UK. And this approach uh, will allow you to create a survey specifically for the mobile tablet app. So well, what I'm going to do is to pass you through to Lisa, and she's going to close the loop, the VOC loop, and talk about analyzing and act on the captured mobile insights. Thanks, Miguel. Actually, there's very little difference in how we analyze mobile and any other data we collect. What is an emerging trend is the desire for good mobile dashboards to get information into the business where and when people need it. So how do we actually do it? First, it's very important to have the right technology to underpin a successful VOC program. Let's be honest, it's impossible to run a successful VOC program without the right technology to automate processes. 
And then there's listening. As you have heard from Miguel, confirm facilitates listening across every channel, every geography, and every single touch point. We believe in capturing feedback in the way that makes the most sense to your business and to your customers. Then we should bring all this data together into one place and then integrate that data with other sources of information that are key to strong analysis, such as financial data, human, human resources data, the engagement survey, or any other business system information that may be useful to bring into this uh, holistic picture of the customer. Now, obviously, the purpose of all this is to drive action at every level throughout the organization. The beauty of technology is that we can automate the process of sharing knowledge and insight to different stakeholders across the organization in a format that makes sense to them and helps them to understand what they need to do to address problems. However, we need to engage people across the business with the data we collect. And to do this, we need to engage their hearts, not just their minds. So we need to tell stories. People listen to stories and understand what it means to them. They can relate to stories. They can talk action, and they can relate stories to colleagues across the business, and the whole program starts to come alive. But unfortunately, as an industry, we're not all as good at this as we should be. As this Temkin study shows, it is not so easy to develop actionable insights or make changes based on the feedback. In fact, less than half of organizations develop actionable insights from the data. Just think about that. 55% of companies, and these are companies with customer experience programs, openly admit they get feedback and then they do nothing with it. So if you want to drive action, provide each of the groups in your organization with a clear call to action. Absolutely, this is about role-based insights, but often it stops there. So talk to your customers, the internal teams within your organization, the customers of your insights. We talk about getting into the shoes of our customers, i.e. the people who are going to the branch. We also need to get into the shoes of our different internal stakeholders. Only then can we be sure that we will be able to drive the action that we need. So it may be that it's easier for them to have information on the move. We need to make it easy for our business users to view, use, and take action on the data. This might be a regional manager making a branch visit, and as he gets close to the branch, he stops, picks up his mobile phone, and has a look at some of the key scores he might need to talk to the branch manager about and the staff about, and understand what's going on within that particular branch. It saves him carrying an awful lot of paper around the place anyway. Or you might have a senior manager who really wants to know what's going on in the, in the business from the voice of the customer side, but travels a lot or even just moves from meeting to meeting in the day and doesn't actually get back to his desktop or his laptop very often. But he wants to keep up to date with the health of the business. Therefore, having this information on your mobile phone is really vital. But really, all this listening, storytelling, and accessible data is about driving change, driving actions that improve the organization. This is both strategic and tactical. The tactical is known as the closed loop quite often. This action impacts on the, on the program and the company's performance. We've actually had seen clients who've had an improvement in revenue simply through closing the loop. The tactical piece, either through customer rescue or through making suggestions of additional products for promoters to cross-sell. This is actually relatively simple to implement and complete, although a level of resource is needed to do the follow-up. But more importantly, at the strategic action level, level, it is important to understand, manage, and monitor the actions you are taking to actually drive change within the business. So recording the issue, the action, and the outcome for sharing across the business, that's the part that drives the long-term return on investment. So the last thing we're going to look at today is emerging trends in mobile. Thank you, Lisa. So in this final part of the presentation, I, we wanted to cover two emerging techniques that can be used to collect location-based um, data using mobile. So these are beacons and location-based surveys. Beacons are devices that communicate with a mobile smartphone. They normally have a cost between five and thirty dollars and they do not require internet connections. The advantage of using beacons is that they work online, 
They make use of Bluetooth, and they have a short range, which, which varies from centimeters to 70 meters. They're very, very precise. And the second approach is the location-based triggering. It, there's normally use outdoors. They don't require internet connection, connection either. And they make use of the GPS uh, location coming from the mobile device. And the difference between the two is that um, location-based triggering uses GPS. And there is no additional cost. Whereas with, I, with beacons, uh, there's always a cost of installing a beacon on uh, maybe the branches, the banking branches. So let me move to the next one and um, show you what it would look like. A trigger uh, with a beacon uh, will, is similar to a, a push messaging that I have just described. And it's normally used, or it can be used with uh, mobile banking uh, in stores, in your mob, uh, banking branches. For example, if you're running a promotion and you're looking to capture feedback from that specific promotion, you can install a beacon on, um, on that promotion. And when the user, when your customer that has got things up installed, Remember, for, those, for both of the, uh, these two approaches, there is a need of having a mobile app. When, you're, when the customer approaches or oh, it's very close to the beacon, then the pop-up appears on their screen, and they can provide you with the feedback, maybe about the promotion that you're running in the moment. So the other option, it's a location-based survey, and it's a similar approach. The triggering happens uh, when the customer it's, uh, it's very near the specific location. And um, it's norm it normally happens um, after leaving a store or after leaving a branch or when entering a branch. So you, you, you actually uh, well, you can select the, um, the number of minutes that it's going to take. You can trigger the surveys uh, based on a specific timer. It makes use of the location coming from the mobile device, which, is, um, which can come from 3G, Wi-Fi, or GPS. And um, you can actually use both. In Confirmed, at Confirmed, we have uh, what we call a Confirmed panel, mobile panel app. And we've implemented both options uh, simply because there are, there are customers that they need the precision of the beacon for specific promotions, and there are customers that they're willing to capture the feedback from every single survey, from every single branch. So they want to run a survey for those customers. So I want to leave you with the final uh, thought and final example. Let's, see, let's imagine that you're running MPS. And I'm going to get asked this question. How can I use uh, the Confirmed Mobile Panel app with my, uh, with my customers? Well, this is what you could do. If you're running NPS or customer satisfaction, you, could, uh, you already have your sample, which are your promoters. Your promoters are willing to provide you with feedback. They are the ideal customers to run an ambassador program. You can invite them to download your uh, white label panel app, which is your sample of customers, which will contain your sample of promoters. They're willing to uh, provide you with feedback about your panel, uh, your mobile app, uh, feedback about every time they enter in a specific um, branch, um, and, or they, they have carried out in a specific uh, action, you can target them um, a survey. So the value of this type of approach, and if you combine in both, is, it, is that you can collect in the moment feedback. You could be using it for specific promotions, maybe um, in a specific campaigns. You want, to, do you, you want to have the feedback about what your customer, your, your banking customer is feeling 
when it, they, they're just looking at the specific adverts that is, they're running just outside your store. So you could consider this, uh, this type of uh, approach using beacons or using the location-based triggering. If you have any more qu any questions with regards to with these two um, two approaches, feel free to contact any of our um, account managers, and we'll be willing to uh, explain it in more detail. So, in summary, we wanted to run this um, webinar to take you through um, a VOC program for mobile banking. Mobile feedback is an integral part of every VOC program. We hope that we have given you some food for thought with this uh, webinar. And the three points that we wanted to convey through these presentations are mobile is here to stay. Mobile penetra penetration in developed countries is over 100%. And in certain countries like the US and the UK is more than 110%. So customers, your mobile banking customers, are connected using their mobile devices to your mobile, um, to your banking systems. They're using the mobile devices as the remote control for their connected lives. And they increasingly expect that their interactions using their mobile banking apps will enable them to carry out all the, uh, all the transactions. Mobile banking is a game changer for the industry because mobile is an option for every touch point in the banking customer journey and is very relevant to capture in the moment feedback. It can be used for every touch point in the customer journey and there is a need always for consistency across all touch points and this includes mobile. This is what uh, Lisa mentioned. If you're running a VLC program, and, and you add in mobile, there needs to be a consistency across all your different touch points. You can use it for transactional and relationship surveys. And if you're capturing feedback, if you're embedding the mobile web service within your existing mobile apps that you're currently running, you can benefit from the additional contextual insights you, you can capture uh, through the mobile device and using the mobile surveys or the surveys on the mobile devices. And finally, act on the feedback to close the loop. Aggregate data to identify all the repeated problems and take these strategic business actions. And I want to leave you with just one final sentence. Mobile feedback is not a nice to have, it's a must have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Miguel and Lisa. Uh, that was great. A lot of wonderful insights. Uh, we do have quite a few questions coming in, um, so let, let's get to that. Um, first, to address several that have come in, I'm glad, Miguel, that you went over uh, whether or not the uh, in-app survey could be branded to the company's branding specifications, and you clarified that, so thank you very much. Um, the next question we're getting, Miguel, this might be for you, but Lisa, feel free to chime in. Uh, can you provide more information about the value of mobile reporting, and what's the difference between desktop reports and mobile reports? I think um, the, the value of mobile, there's not a lot of difference to start the second half of the question first. Obviously, you get less information on the mobile, but if you design your desktop and your mobile correctly, you'll you will get um, the right the right kind of data through for what you want to do at that particular moment, which will depend on the different stakeholder who is using that bit of information. The value of mobile reporting is all around being able to look at what's going on in the business on the go, so that you can see what's happening. Um, as you're moving around the business, whether that's out and about um, visiting different parts of the business or literally you don't get back to the, the desktop or the laptop to actually see what's happening. Um, but in terms of, of the design of it, that's where our earlier stage comes in when we look at what the business needs are and how what you would want to be able to see on the mobile, and that would depend on who's actually looking at that data. 
Okay, great. Uh, okay, here's one. Uh, is it better to use push messaging rather than SMS invites? That's a very good question. Well, it depends on the scenario. If you're looking to target customers that do not use uh, your mobile app or that are using other channels, then the recommendation obviously is to use uh, email and SMS. Um, but if you're looking to collect feedback from your mobile customers, your customers, that are using your mobile banking app, then um, push messaging is the channel to use because the, the challenge with push messaging is because there is a need to have the mobile banking app installed. And for this uh, set of customers, you know that they already have your mobile banking installed, uh, mobile banking app installed. So it, the answer is depends on the scenario. And uh, if you have customers with mobile, uh, if you have mobile banking customers, you can target some of the um, invitations through the push channel. And if you have customers that they don't have the uh, mobile banking app installed, you can target the invitation through the SMS or email. So, um, or you can use both. Um, I recently spoke to a a, a, a a, a, a financial institution that are actually uh, planning to use both uh, and then l listen to uh, the feedback from their customers and then decide and then um, collect that information and, 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 and mark the customers because the, basically the idea is to approach your customer on their preferred channel. So if you, if you know that they have a mobile app installed, but they prefer to uh, reply to your survey, answer your survey using an SMS, well, continue using the SMS. I think that's a really good point. I bet it would be interesting to look at the differences between the responses from yeah. the app and also their push versus the text as well. Uh, okay, another one here. How do I get my business engaged with action on mobile collected data? Um, that comes back to the point around talking to them and giving them stories and letting them understand and understanding what the business need is as well as what the customer needs is. But importantly, you need to make it easy for the, the person within the business to get hold of the customer, but also respond to that customer in a way that works for them. So it's pretty much the same as at the listening stage. You try and look at ways that work for the customer. At the other end, when you're, you're getting back in touch with them, um, in terms of the closed loop, it's, work, it's working with them in a way that works for that customer again. So maybe it's using the mobile number if that's what they want, if that's what they're used to. Um, in terms of engage with action um, on a more strategic level, really you've almost become device agnostic at that point because um, the business, the customer feedback is relevant because it's listening to your customers regardless of how they contact you. So it's exactly the same as getting the business engaged with acting strategically on any other medium. Okay, great. Uh, all right, uh, this one goes back to your geolocation and iBeacon discussion. Uh, is it possible to use both geolocation triggering and beacon to capture in the moment feedback? Uh, I'd add to that, what's the benefit of using both of that? Well, the answer is yes. For example, with the, with the Confirmed Mobile uh, Panel app, it's possible to use both methods. And the benefit of geolocation um, is that triggering does not have any cost associated to it because it makes use of the GPS uh, or, or the location-based uh, or location information coming from the mobile device. So it's ideal to use it when you're looking to collect feedback from all your banking branches, all the different branches across the U.S., for example, uh, then uh, geolocation triggering would be more appropriate because uh, I imagine there, there are a lot of uh, branches. Um, and then iBeacon technology um, can be, makes use of Bluetooth and the, loca the information, is, um, the location is always very accurate. It works indoors. So it's ideal for promotions or if you're looking to collect feedback from maybe a specific promotion running on a specific area and, and you want to run uh, that, uh, that um, method of collecting feedback for maybe a, a, an N number of uh, branches that you have selected. But to answer, going back to the question, you could use both 
And in the benefit of using both is that if your customer has got Bluetooth turned off, but they have GPS turned on, the, the survey will be triggered. And the other way around, if they have location information turned off, but Bluetooth on, because maybe they're using their mobile when they're driving in the car, then the survey will be triggered. So if you, uh, if you can use both, yes, go ahead. Okay, excellent. Um, now, I, we still have a couple questions, but I, um, I think we've answered the majority of them. If we didn't get to your question, uh, we will do so afterwards. Uh, Miguel and Lisa will reach out to you. Um, so with that, uh, I want to thank Miguel and Lisa and everybody that joined today. I also want to remind you that we'll be sending the slides and recording out after the call. Um, and also remind you that tomorrow we have our last uh, webinar in the series, the CX Stream series, and that's five critical factors in creating a successful customer experience uh, with Michelle Falcon, uh, who's a customer and employee experience coach. We're excited to have him join us, and we're looking forward to his insights. Uh, so look forward or look for the uh, invite in your email soon, and we hope you join us tomorrow. And thanks again, everyone. Thank you.